Okay, it's 3 o'clock and we are going to go ahead and get started. I know we're going to have people probably filter in over the next couple of minutes. My name is Rebecca Anderson and I am the Educational Technology Manager at the Napa County Office of Education. Um, and I'm here to talk to you today about QR codes, it's the fast version. Um, I want to let you know that the session is being recorded um, and also following this session I'm going to send out to you a link that has um, a list of a ton of resources and a link to all the classroom ideas that I'm going to share with you. So you don't need to worry about taking fast and furious notes. Today I'm going to give you an overview of what QR codes are and how they work and then talk about why you might want to use them in your classroom and then hopefully you will leave the session today with some new ideas for your classroom. So this isn't going to be a step-by-step -step instructional webinar, it's just a, an overview to get you started in using QR codes in your classrooms. So I'm going to start with the overview. Um, so first, what is a QR code? QR stands for quick response, so um, QR code, quick response code, and they work just like barcodes do. So when you go to the grocery store and the can of beans has that little label on there with all the lines on it and it gets scanned. Um, so if you're looking at the image on the screen, we have an arrangement of square dots. This is what a QR code looks like. And all of those square dots represent data, unlike uh, a barcode where it's the lines. So you might be wondering, like, what's the big deal about QR codes? Why are they so popular? Well, the reason they're so popular right now is there's two reasons. So first is the fact that a standard barcode was only able to hold over 30 characters. And a QR code can store over 7,000 characters. So a big difference in how much data can be stored by one of those um, little codes. And back in 1994 is when they first came out, but as you know, they weren't very popular then. Um, they came out in Japan and they were used by uh, Toyota as a part of their manufacturing process. It's how they were tracking their vehicles. But in order to use it, you had to have an extra device. You had to have an extra scanner. Um, now, QR codes are popular now because everybody has smartphones in their pockets. And smartphones have cameras on them, which can uh, be used as a scanner. So anyone with a smartphone has a QR scanner in their pockets, so it's available. So some of the ways they are used, um, one common use is for sharing additional data. So taking advantage of the fact that that tiny little QR code can share some thousand bits of information. So um, one example is um, this image here, we got a little tag and there's a QR code on it and the past we might have seen a standard barcode and it just had a little bit of pricing information. Now if someone could come along, they could scan that, not only would they get pricing information and um, that would be used up front when they're checking out, but uh, consumers then can, can scan that and they can get additional information about the product itself, so you know, things like products, um, where it's manufactured, all of the details in one single location. They can get fashion tips, get images, videos, all about that single product. QR codes are also used for tickets. So you've probably boarded an airplane and noticed this funny little character on there. Um, they can be used here's the little character, they can be used for actually tracking people, so a QR code can be assigned to a person and any time that that QR code is scanned, we know that it belongs to that person. Objects, um, most people don't realize this, but QR codes can be queued up to send out um, text messages. Um, if you wanted to queue up a telephone call, um, queue up emails, you can have things uh, queue up to automatically send to your uh, calendars, it can link up to Google Maps, um, it can be used to link people directly to things like audio files, so when the QR code is scanned it's automatically going to pull up a little window like this where they can play the, the audio file or they could download it. Um, same thing over here, like it's once the QR code is scanned it can immediately pull up an image or it can pull up a video. 
And the best thing about QR codes, aside from their actual function, is that they are free and they're easy to use. They're easy to make and they're relatively easy for people to use with, um, the, with their scanners. Okay, so in order to use QR codes, you first have to create your QR code. Um, and to create a QR code, you need to have a QR code generator, which generally is as simple as visiting a website. And once you're on a website, and I have a screenshot up of one up here on the slide, you choose your function. Usually those are on the left side. I've visited a lot of generator sites lately. Um, you enter your content, and then you are presented with your code. So I do have a list of generators for you, um, so don't feel like uh, you need to you know, find out what this particular one is. I have that included in the list, and there's a lot of options. Um, most QR code generator sites will also let you create codes without you ever um, creating an account with them, so you don't have to go and register first. However, if you're going to be doing QR codes a lot, um, you might want to go ahead and register. One of the benefits of registering is usually then you're able to go back and you can see how many times your code has been scanned, or maybe you've got your codes created and you want to be able to have the option to go back and edit those same codes. So there are a variety of generators, and for contrast, I've got a screenshot of another generator up here. Um, so there are some different considerations uh, when you are selecting the generator that you want to use. Um, you know, first, is it going to generate? Is it going to create um, what you want? And once you have that figured out, is the site easy, or does the website make you crazy when you are using it? So you need to take those things into consideration. Most of the QR code generator sites are free. However, a lot of them also offer pro versions. And what's interesting is there, it's not like there's a consistent feature that's being offered across the board for all of the sites as what's a pro feature and what's not. So pretty much anything you want to do, you're going to be able to find a free site that can do it. But like I said, it's just going to be a matter of you figuring out which site feels comfortable and easiest for you um, to use. Um, and some of the sites have things built in, like this one does over here in the lower right corner. There's an option to put your code on other stuff. So they have a built-in feature that once you have your code created, then it can take you directly to a store where you could have things like shirts, mugs, ties. I don't know why you would want a tie with a QR code, but you might. That's an option that's available to you. Okay, so once you have your QR code generated, then you need to get it and you need to distribute it. So uh, most of the time, you're going to be prompted to download your uh, QR code. Um, and then once you have it downloaded, you can do with it whatever you want. So you can take your QR code, dump it into your Microsoft Word document that you're working on to create your flyer, your worksheet. Um, you can you can put it into any document that will accept an image. Um, some of the QR code generator sites also give you an option to print directly from them. So you'll just have to figure out which is going to be the best for you. But I would um, say like 98% of the time, you're going to want to download your QR code and keep it so that then you can use it um, wherever instead of just printing it one time and then relying upon that hard copy. So then once you have your QR code um, distributed, you've got it on your flyers, it's on a poster, it's on any kind of item, um, we ne it needs to be scanned. So everybody has, like I said before, they everybody has a QR code scanner in their pocket if they have a smartphone. Um, in order, though, for it to actually read the QR codes, you have to have an app. Um, there are a ton of apps. I just did a quick search in the Google Play Store and found these Android apps. Um, they, you can see they're all free. Same thing in the iTunes Store. There are a ton of apps. Um, I, and I've tested out several of them, and I, uh, I, I can't even imagine why I would need to have one of the paid versions. So you can rest assured that any of the free apps for reading your QR codes is going to work just fine. 
So one thing to remember about these apps is that they're um, all apps are not created equal. So they're all different. Um, they all have different little features. So no matter what you um, pick, you're still going well, once you have your QR code created and once you've picked a single reader, you're still going to want to test it out. And you're going to want to test it out with multiple readers so that you can also give your students some different options for scanning and reading those codes. So you probably have Android users and you probably have iPhone users. So you want to make sure that you've um, selected a reader that's going to work for them. And so the reason you have to test it is I might create a code with a generator um, that I think is going to um, open up directly to an image, well, I need to make sure that the readers that I selected are going to do that. So you're going to want to test them out. Um, also, if you're interested in having your students um, do things like saving the scans, or maybe you're going to incorporate this somehow with some sort of a social media project, there are scanners that have um, those features built in as well. Okay, I have a number of classroom ideas to share with you. This isn't intended to be a complete list. It's just a list to get you started. I actually I visited several sites, um, pulled from many of them. You'll have access to all of the ones I pulled from them. I just pulled down the ones that kind of stuck out in my mind, um, and I tried to get a wide variety. So let's get started. Uh, Using QR codes as URL shorteners. So this is a very popular use of using QR codes, especially with um, the younger kids. So um, if you are using, for example, Google Docs, we know that the URLs generated are very long. I mean, look at the series of numbers and letters. So if I have a Google Doc. Or if I have a Google form that I'm going to ask my students to fill out, um, I have to have them visit that site, and I got to sit there and see if they're going to be able to get through that crazy long address. And even if I choose to go with a URL, a URL shortener, we have here, so I have a shortened web address that goes to the same page, I'm still going to run into the issue of things like are these O's or are these zeros? So what some teachers are doing is they'll use the QR code generator to create their QR code. And then what they'll do is they'll uh, project that onto their screen and then have the kids use their devices to scan that. And then that will take them directly to the web page without any of the typing in. QR codes are uh, very widely used now in museums and in other art installations um, as a way to share additional information about the item that's on display. And this museum idea is being carried forward into the classroom. Um, Julie Rayner, who is actually online today, our online coordinator at NCOE, has, um, she recently did an interview with John Harrington for our blog. And uh, he told us about Kendra Kalparis. She's an art teacher from RLS who had students create videos of how they came up with the idea for their paintings. And then once the videos were created, then they put together a QR code that linked to the video. And then they hung those QR codes below the paintings. So then parents could come in and then with their smartphones they could scan the QR codes and then they could hear the story of how their kids came up with the idea for the painting. And then just a quick side note, this is not an image uh, from Kendra's class, it's uh, an image I found just for the use of our presentation today. Uh, John also shared another story of how he was working with a music teacher who had, who was um, sending home practice sheets. So John suggested that the teacher create a recording of how each piece should be played, and then create a QR code that would link to that recording. And then the QR codes would be added on to the music worksheet so that the kids would take the music worksheets, they could go home, do their practices, and then if they got stuck, 
they can listen to how the piece should um, actually be played. I really like this idea. I think it offers a lot of flexibility, right? You can use um, QR codes as part of your, um, as part of learning stations. So what you would do is you would put QR codes in different areas of the room that would take students to um, different online activities. It could take them to videos or other content. So obviously, you know, you could have a video running on a single iPad at any station. Um, but then everybody who's at that station has to watch the same video. Um, if you have multiple QR codes and everybody has their own device, then everybody can watch something different. It's an opportunity also then to have the students working at their own pace. And I thought this idea was pretty clever. A uh, science teacher uh, took the periodic table of elements and uh, he added QR codes to it. So as the kids are studying the table of elements, they can, on their worksheet, they can scan the element and then they're taken to a video that gives them more information. And actually, I have this, uh, I have a high resolution image of this. So that if anybody is interested in grabbing that and using that for their class, that will be available to you. Using QR codes as um, supplemental information, I think that's kind of the underlying theme across all of these ideas. Um, it's nice to have, uh, you know, a skeleton here with all of, of the names of the bones. But space is going to limit the information that can actually be shared on this worksheet. So a teacher could come in and they could add QR codes um, onto worksheets for supplemental information. The other thing about QR codes is they can be very small. So just like on the um, previous slide here, um, you know, even though like, you know, these little small stamps, they don't show up as crisp clear here on our slide presentation just because the image has been compressed, but on print it's very clear. So they can be stamp size. So if you have classroom models or objects, you can put QR codes around the room and not have them take up a ton of space. I ran across a website, so thephysicaleducator.com, that was doing a lot with technology and physical education, which I found somewhat fascinating. Um, and they were doing something interesting with QR codes. So they had four sports, volleyball, basketball, hockey, and rugby. And what they were doing was for each sport, then there was a set of skills. So, you know, shooting, passing, blocking, whatever it was, however it applied to each sport they had a series of posters. And so you can see on the posters then, there was supplemental information added. So over here on the right side, there's some QR, there's a QR code. And then at the bottom, there was um, QR codes for different levels. So level one, level two, and level three. And there was a whole series of these posters. And I have these available as well, if anyone is interested. And while you may not have, you may not be a PE teacher, I, I don't think we have any PE teachers online, but maybe you have some other types of guides or posters that this um, idea might be applicable to. Uh, you can use QR codes as a way to do icebreakers. So you could create QR codes or you could have students create the QR codes. Um, they would get printed onto a label and then the kids would wear the labels on their shirt and then they would be scanning each other. So you could be collecting, the students could be collecting contact information from one another. Um, maybe the codes have unique information about each student um, and they have to find someone with a similar interest. But you can design this any number of ways. And you can also do it so that they're still having interactions. Someone pointed out to me like, oh, but then they're just scanning and they're talking to each other. And, you know, what's the point of the icebreaker? Well, if you, you can design it in a way that there would still be a significant amount of, of actual human interaction there. Um, Self-checks are a great use of QR codes. Um, it, a lot of the sites that I was looking at was referencing math. So um, basically, you can add the QR code onto the worksheet so that students can do the work 
And then when they're done, they can scan the code to see um, how, if they got it correct, if they did it the right way. Um, that way then the answer and the process isn't revealed up front. They don't have to go back through flipping through other pages to check their works. So they can just use their device to do a quick scan of it. So good for practice sheets. You probably don't want to do that for a test. <laughs> I also really liked uh, this idea. A teacher was, um, the, the class was doing a reading on the Da Vinci Code, and the teacher made several QR codes and um, put them on, on stickies, like little labels, and put them, added them into the book so that as students were reading the book, they could scan different QR codes and it would take them to relevant pictures or videos and Wikipedia entries about the places and the art that and the people that were described in the book. So I thought it was a nice way to take something that's kind of static and make it a little bit more um, interactive and to be able to go a little bit deeper with the content and relating it to real life. Uh, class shops, if any of you are doing class shops, you can use QR codes instead of normal price tags to simulate the real sales experience. And you can turn it into a little math um, challenge as well. So if the item is $10 and you're going to have a sale, what's 15% off, you can have your students do that and then they can go in and they can update their own price tags. If you have any type of gardens, if you're a biology teacher or science teacher, um, you can uh, get special labels that are UV protected or you can laminate some of your QR codes and you can stick them in front of your plants so that then when your students are out at doing their plant identification, if they need help, they can scan it. Or you could do something where they would scan the label and then they would get more information about you know, what the plant looks like at different stages of life, what it might look like in bloom. And lastly, you can use um, Google Maps with your QR codes. So you could create codes with addresses and it will create a, a link to a Google Map. And then the kids can use Google Maps to navigate to an address. So these are better for older, older students. Um, you could put QR codes on a paper map, and then the student would use the paper map to get there. And then they could use the QR code then to get extra information about, um, about the locations, like sort of like an augmented reality. And then conversely, you could do something where you could send a student out with a map, and then you could have them scan QR codes that you placed at each location because you can do that sort of um, tracking. Okay, so we are at the end. And I do have